And now, the After Action Review with Rod Rodriguez. Welcome to episode 22 of the After Action Review podcast. I'm your host, Rod Rodriguez. And in this episode, we're talking to Ives Domingo, social media expert, uh, CEO of Mike Media and U.S. Marine Corps veteran. This is a pretty cool episode because we, we talk a lot about social media. Obviously, this is his uh, this is his thing. His company is built around uh, advertising, social media, but it's a huge piece of today's marketplace. Like you cannot have a business without some type of social media presence. And for some reason, there is no more uh, reluctant, no more hesitant crowd of people that I have yet to meet like veterans who do not want to use social media. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Uh, I don't want to use Facebook. It's it's a waste of time. Snapchat's for kids. Instagram is stupid. Do you want to, I don't know, pull an ad in a magazine? Do you want to get an ad on a newspaper? Do you think you have enough money to put a television advertisement? Or God forbid, a radio advert, which, uh, you know what? I honestly haven't listened to the radio, like radio, radio in years. Uh, if it's not a podcast, if it's not on a Spotify or Pandora, I'm just not listening. Okay. Most people are migrating towards the world of on demand radio, podcasting, that kind of thing. So this traditional idea of advertisement doesn't work. Well, it, it, it does in certain ways. There's, it still has its place, but not as much, right? Facebook is, it, it, Facebook's pretty much taking the place of your modern website. So whereas like, for example, I have a website for the After Act Review Podcast, it's www.theaarpodcast.com. And there you can find links to uh, the different uh, podcasts, links to different videos that I put out, uh, the reading list. But really, Facebook itself has become your landing page. So a lot of people just direct people here to Facebook and from Facebook you can go to the different uh, types of uh, media outlets that you have set up for yourself. Not only that, you look at Instagram, Snapchat, you know, every social media outlet, it has its place. Not, it, it's, you know, you don't post the same things in every platform. So. I mean, I, you know, kind of going, that's kind of going into so, social media strategy. If you're interested, we can put a video out about social media strategy, or you can email me at Rod Rodriguez at uh, the AAR podcast.com. And I'll tell you, we could talk a little more about your social media strategy if you have any uh, questions about that. Basically, you know, we really need to wake up as a veteran community and really embrace social media and say, hey, look, this is what we're going to be doing and this is how we're going to do it. And it's perfectly fine to have a Snapchat account for your business. It's perfectly fine to have an Instagram account for your business. In fact, I highly encourage you to do it. And if you want to link up with me again, at the AAR podcast on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, boy, I think that's it. And Facebook, of course. So the other thing that we're going to talk about in this uh, podcast is you as an individual. You know, improving you. And I I've mentioned this before, behind every great business is a person, is the CEO. And as the CEO of your business, you represent its values, you represent its intelligence, you represent uh, its competitive edge, its unfair advantage over uh, your competition. A big piece of this is improving yourself as a person. It, it's a thing called emotional intelligence. And I know it sounds, um, sounds touchy-feely. It's really not, though. It's about understanding how you manage and how you interact with your customers, with your employees. And I gotta tell you, this is a, an extremely necessary, a critical skill to have as a veteran. You're coming out of a service. You're coming out of an environment where people talk different to each other. People behave differently to each other. And now you're gonna be interacting with civilian uh, customers in the civilian world, and it's, it's a little bit different. You might even have civilian employees although I highly encourage you to hire veterans, but you might have some civilian employees. So in that respect, that transition is really important. So you really got to start knowing yourself. And if you think like, oh, I've got, I know who I am, I'm 25 years in the United States military, blah, blah, blah. I'm telling you, you're in for a rude awakening because the business civilian, the civilian business world 
is going to be dramatically different from the world that you just came from. See, like this knife hand, probably can't do that in the civilian world that much. Uh, probably a little bit, but not that much. We talk a little bit about that as well, and that's gonna be a critical piece for your development as a CEO, as a founder, as a business owner. It's important that we acknowledge those things. It's important that we as, as an entrepreneurs acknowledge that we're not strong in every respect, but those areas that we're a little weak on, we can improve that simply by reading some books. And we're, you know, Ives is gonna, he's gonna make some great suggestions on some reading material. And then we're gonna post that reading material on the uh, After Action Review podcast reading list. So you can go down there, uh, hit up that website, click a button and buy these books. And I'm telling you, leaders are readers, people. Read a damn book. If there's any other, compl if there's any other issue I've had with veteran entrepreneurs, aside from I don't want to engage in in, in uh, social media, nobody wants to read. And I get it. Who has time to read a book? You don't need to read a paper book. Pick up an audio book. Okay, an audio book is just as good. I listen to them all the time. Sometimes I listen to the same audio book two or three times in a row. It's okay. If I gotta listen to it two or three times in a row to catch the content, then I'm gonna listen to it two or three times in a row because it's better than not having listened to it at all. If you're interested in audiobooks, you can go to Audible. That's what I use. They're not sponsoring me. I'm getting no money from Audible. Bastards, you should be sponsoring the show because I promote you guys a lot. In fact, you can go through the reading list click on any one of those books. It'll take you to the audio version. Uh, you can see that there's an audible. You can set up an audible account. It's fast. It's easy. It's kind of, I don't know. I don't think it's pricey. Some people might think it's pricey. It's worth the money. It really is worth the money. Just get the lowest, get the cheapest plan and start there. Go through a couple of audio books, go into the audio book section, look up marketing, look up advertising, look up entrepreneurship, start expanding your horizons or getting yourself educated. And you're gonna find some serious uh, gems in there of knowledge. You're gonna be like, oh crap, I should have thought about this before. I do it all the time. In fact, if it weren't for Gary Vaynerchuk uh, and his books, probably be pretty lost in the, in the social media sauce right now. So I'll be posting some of those books on the, uh, like I said, the reading list and we'll get that done. That's it, without uh, further ado, let's get into it. I've Domingo, Mike Media. I've Domingo. Thanks for joining me today, buddy. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your business. So, Rod, well, my name's Ives Domingo, and my business is Mike Media. Um, the the name stems from actually my brother. The it stands for My Creation Enterprises, um, spelled M Y K E. My brother's name was Michael, Mike for short, but it was spelled M I K E. He actually passed away three years ago in a car accident, and we were both very creative people. And we we both wanted to do something that was something more business oriented, something that we can be our own boss. And so that's why I kind of just came up. That's how the name came up was Mike. And um, I didn't know it would be digital marketing at all. I thought I'd be more into the graphic design, designing aspects of it, but just for the past two years of me growing and personally developing myself, I have realized how important communicating messages, uh, communication at all, advertising, marketing, and how important it is in the business, business aspect. I actually had a lot of fun learning about the psychology of people and people's social behaviors. And so what better market to do that in and other than social media where everyone's on it and people's, you know, the social behavior of people and psychology, it's, that's where the eyeballs are. And so that's where the business came. Awesome. And what branch of service were you in when you were in? I was four years at duty um, in the Marine Corps. Those four years were very sporadic because I originally started in the Marine Corps reserves. I'm still in the reserves right now. It's been my, it's been 12 years starting in June 5th was my anniversary boot camp date. So it's been 12 years so far. I'm, I'm currently with Marine Forces Pacific, Mar 4 Pack for short. That's awesome, man. So how does, Thank you. How does a jarhead jump into <laughs> digital marketing? I mean, it seems like, the, what's the connect there? <laughs> there really isn't. Uh, any connection it's all about just you know just movement and that's one thing I always tell people is just like 
just keep moving. You're going to find doors closing on you. You're going to find doors open. You just, but you can't just stay stagnant and finally have something come up with you. So what happened was that when it took me about seven to eight years to graduate from college with all the deployments, all the training that I was doing in the reserves. And after I graduated from college, I went to college for, um, first it was animation. I'm a, I like to draw, but then I realized how much, how competitive that space is. And like, yeah, yeah. I would see these kids, uh, drawings, like they're, like they're scribbles or like, um, their sketch pads where they're just like goofing around. And like, I swear their, their scribbles were like masterpieces to me. And I would like me trying so hard, it would, it wouldn't even compare to their, to their sketch pads. So I'm just like, man, this is super hard. Animation is super hard. So, but I was really into the digital part of it, like the tech part, 3d stuff. Mm-hmm. And so that I switched my major from animation to video game design where I learned how to do Photoshop, 3ds Max, everything that you see in a video game. I was a designer in that in that space. So I graduated really competitive still, and it was really hard for me to find a job. I actually landed a spot with a independent game uh, studio where we ma- we actually made a game. We put it on Kickstarter, but what we found out was the marketing part of it is what pretty much failed the, the the start of it and and plus I, I couldn't I still was looking for a job so I actually went back on after duty orders with my reserve unit to pay for the bills and really just from there it I just kept moving I, I started um, what got me into like the whole business aspect of it I was I remember it was December of 2013. And I was actually pretty depressed. I was like, man, I don't have the job that I want. I'm not moving forward. Like, what the heck? And funny enough, I know people make fun of this guy, but Ty Lopez's YouTube uh, video came on, you know, about the, him and the Lamborghini. And so I started listening to him and I started following him. I got his like, guy? yeah, the yeah, knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Keep going, so I started going. following him and yeah, and uh, I started, I, you know, I did his 67 steps or whatever, and I went to his conferences and then at his conference was this guy named Nick Unsworth. He, he wrote the book, uh, the book on Facebook marketing. If you Google it, you'll find it. It's like blue, a blue cover, but that's how he got started. Like he had 10 failed businesses. I just really resonated with his story. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, that's me. Like, I'm totally that guy. And so when he came off stage, I like stuck uh, up to him to uh, talk to him. And he gave me a, a ticket to his conference. And since then, that's when the whole what my business was in digital marketing, because that's what he did. And, you know, I did. No, I had no idea. I didn't go to school for marketing. I didn't know anything about advertising. But, you know, it interested me. And so I did what most, I guess, entrepreneurs would do. They just take action. They they read books. I started reading a lot more books. I started just going. I mean, YouTube has so many videos on there. The internet in general has so much resources that someone can learn and just do whatever. Like you really do not need a degree um, to do to open up a business, which. You know, that's something I can talk about hours and hours upon about degrees and all that, but um, won't go there. Won't go there yet. So I think it's interesting that you found mentorship in a video that I think a lot, like you said, you know, don't make fun of me for it. A lot of people uh, have done that. They've kind of mocked this guy and (laughs) and I, I may or may not have been one of them, but the further along this this road of entrepreneurship I go, I'm realizing that some of these guys that I was kind of looking at, kind of like, ha-ha, whatever, uh, I'm mm-hmm. one of those guys that kind of did a ha-ha-ha at Tony Robbins. And now I'm like, wow. oh, <laughs> snap. I'm watching Tony Robbins almost every morning now. I'm listening to Gary Vaynerchuk, and I'm looking at these guys like, mm-hmm. why, was I, why was I dogging them before? And maybe there was something about – 
maybe I don't know. Maybe there's an underlying psychological like I don't know, uh, hate hating on somebody that that I wish that maybe I was I shouldn't be resonating with like you did. Yeah, I mean it is. What's interesting and what I've been learning about personal development and a lot of my growth has been in the past six months when I went to this course on emotional intelligence and um, uh, I forgot his name. He, he wrote Miguel Ruiz. He wrote the four agreements and I know it, this is super like psychology type of stuff and like subconscious stuff. But I mean, if we, when we talk, when we're going to have a conversation about to someone where we everyone's a mirror of each other this is what miguel was talking about that like say if i have a judgment against someone it's because that's how i look at myself in that regard and yeah and i i you know i called up one of my marines recently maybe about a month and a half ago to kind of just see how what's up with him i mean i he's my brother i would take a bullet for him any day but he was just one of those guys that a lot of people uh teased teased and you know i told him and me i was i was like his platoon sergeant as well but i told him like dude i apologize if i ever made you feel small or insignificant with what i said to just bring you down and i just want to tell you that that's because how that's how I saw myself as insignificant. And so I got to put that crap on someone else. Yeah. And, you know, he did. He kind of got it, but didn't really get it. He's just like, I really appreciate that, man. I'm like, just believe me. That's how if people bring you down, put you down. It's because that's how they see themselves. So since you started down this journey and it sounds like you've really embarked on a journey of self-discovery, you, you seem to be kind of shooting for improving yourself. How has that affected you as an entrepreneur? Yeah. I mean, a lot of things. There's, you know how it is. Growing a business is is super hard. It can be, it can kill your confidence in a second, especially when you get to sales. Um, just getting that no. And w how personal development has helped me grow is really getting that more of that thick skin yes i got the thick skin in the marine corps especially on my uh my my last deployment but when you go into civilian role and you get into sales when you know you're not doing all this fighting but you're you put yourself emotionally out there i mean that's what people are just like super scared of i mean it was crazy i was just thinking about this the other day like we were able to run to the, the sound of gunfire, but yet we're scared of putting ourselves out there in an emotional state. And when I first did my um, test run of basically door knocking, I wanted to get my I, be immersed in the whole selling thing. Dude, that was that was like a rough day for me just because I, I mean, the looks that I got from people, the the some of the craziest things that people have told me when, I mean, you know, you're just like, all you're there is just talking. You're not trying to, I'm just trying to um, tell you something person. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you know, man. it's like, why, why are you so mean to me? You know? <laughs> and so that's my personal growth in there. Um, that's where it's really helped me. And, um, with my relationships, I've realized that, my relation, my current relations that I have with my friends or my family, I mean, those are the people that I really need to stay connected with. And with the personal growth that I've been going through, I realized that I have been patting myself on the back thinking that I have these connections like, oh, I'll go to a birthday party or I'll call up, call them up once in a while, but really to have a deeper connection other than we're friends and family. Um, it's helped me to know that's, that's how it's going to grow my business is having these relationships because the more I'm in their head, the more they're going to think of me. And if they go to someone saying, Hey, Ives has a digital marketing business. Let me uh, refer Ives to this person. And yeah, so relationships is what's 
really helped me through the personal growth. So as you've developed this new emotional intelligence, this new emotional intelligence quotient, if you will, and that's something that I hear from a lot of different uh, players in the business world is, is you can be intellectually smart, intellectually intelligent, that's great. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a certain level of emotional intelligence, you will fail at your business. Yeah. And that's something I've seen in the military as well. Some of the, my best leaders weren't the guys that were the smartest leaders. They were the most emotionally attuned leaders. They were the people that could, that could get me motivated, that could help me understand the mission. And in turn, I mm -hmm. wanted to do the mission. Yeah. It's the, yeah, and it's, it's really the, the, that emotional connectedness, it, it gives rapport to the other person. And then once you have that rapport, I mean, you can persuade anyone to do anything. I mean, I've been told like, really be careful about having really high IQ because you can either use it for good or you can use it for evil. I can see that. I can totally see that. Yeah. So you jump into Facebook marketing, you're, you're in SEO. Um, it sounds like your job is primarily to help these companies boost, trying to get their, trying to help them out and, and, and getting that name out there, that whole marketing piece, which is honestly tough. You could have the best widget on the planet, but like you said, if you're not advertising it correctly, if you don't understand the power of social media, or what SEO really can do for you, it's not going to move. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about how it is that your company does this and what is it you're looking at when you look at Facebook, for example? So I'm not sure if you got a video on your personal profile about how like there's currently 2 billion users on Facebook. And it makes me laugh when I see yellow pages still and it has right. pages worth of advertising. I don't know how much money companies and businesses pay for that uh, five by five little thing on in yellow pages. But I mean, even if it costs like a hundred bucks, why not put a hundred bucks into Facebook where that's going to be able, you're going to reach a targeted audience, a specific audience that you're looking for. And you're going to be able to reach a hundred bucks can reach about on average 500 to uh, a thousand people a day. So, and they're specific and targeted audience. It's not like yellow pages where you put it in the middle of a shopping center and people just walk by it. And in, in another powerful thing is that that's where the eyeballs are is on pe people's cell phones. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't know how much more powerful advertising can be if that's where the eyeballs are. You can set the specific audience that you're trying to reach and pay a lot less dollars than you would in traditional marketing and advertising. I heard Facebook ads described as the most undervalued advertising uh, going on right now. Like you said, 100 bucks is gonna buy you a thousand eyeballs. It's gonna buy you a thousand people to see your ad. And if 10% of those people click, you know, that's, that's still significant for the price point. Yeah. So how do you feel yeah. about these, and, and, and again, I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna pick on my vets right now because my <laughs> vets, vets have a tendency to be very old school and we talked about this before we started recording. I talked to a vet just recently who said they didn't use social media to promote their business because, quote, social media is a big waste. It's the biggest time waster on the planet. And besides, that's for kids. That's for kids. And he was talking uh -huh. about Snapchat, and Facebook, and uh, Instagram. What do you have to say to those crusty old vets who are our age, but acting like crusty old vets? Well, I mean, it's 2017, right? 
And now uh, just like how we were, what we were discussing before, if that kind of crusty old vet is saying so many people are wasting time on Facebook, why not promote to those so many people wasting their time on Facebook? I mean, if that's what they're wasting the time on, you might as well promote to them and advertise to them, right? So, I mean, let's – TV, for example. I mean, TV is good. A lot of people still watch TV. But what has uh, come up since the – for TV? People have TiVo. So when a commercial comes up, you either, you know, skip forward. You have a recorded television. You, you just skip the advertisement entirely. Netflix. And I – yeah. Um, Faith Popcorn said about this whole – phenomenon called pop uh cocoon i forgot when she wrote about it but it basically the culture of people are going to cocoon they're going to do what they want at when they want and so that's why t when tivo is invented we can watch tv shows whenever we want netflix is huge it put blockbuster out of business because people can now watch movies whenever they want you know uh youtube what I I've been binge watching uh, YouTube lately on uh, SNL. I don't watch SNL on S Saturday Night Live, right? Yeah, I don't watch SNL on Saturday nights anymore. Oh. I go on YouTube and I watch SNL skits. And so, same thing with uh, Facebook. Like, and there's advertisements. Yes, and there's advertisements yeah. right before you start your video, and sometimes at the at the end, and you watch yeah. them. You have to watch them. Yeah. Unless you have YouTube, right? But that's another yeah. story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which it's, I think it's genius, super genius. But uh, I mean, just Facebook alone, you're, when you're people, even if you're not wasting time that you're connect, you're just, you want to see what your family's doing, you're going to see an advertisement. There's just no, you can't, unless you just turn off advertising alone, but. <laughs> The psychology people, they will not go through the, the trouble of turning off advertising just because it just it, it wastes their time. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, whether you like you think Facebook is a waste of time or not, people are on there to waste time or to connect. And that's where the eyeballs are. I just I, – I don't know how to explain that even more to no, – No, I, I'm with you. It's, it's, uh, that's been a fight. For me, uh, working with some of the, the some of these veterans is is you know Snapchat or Instagram. They there is this I don't know. It seems like there's a cultural aversion within the, the veteran community. Like I'm not going to do that. That's stupid. And it's it's like well I I get I, I guess I kind of get the stigma that that comes with Instagram or comes with Snapchat. Uh, you think kids you think high school kids you think selfies but if you're running a cafe for example um you might want to take a picture of your coffee you might want to take a picture of your pastries that you're making um and put that on instagram find an influencer that's going to come down and sit at your cafe who's got twenty five thousand followers and they're going to put that one picture up and be like i really like this coffee boom you've got instant you know you've got instant exposure but it just seems very difficult to get that message out and i think it's important for vets to hear that message from somebody in the industry like yourself who's saying i am a subject matter expert y'all messing up <laughs> i mean it's it's simply just a tool that's all these social media platforms are is tools and whether like it's either if you're going to go to war you can either use a really old school piece of equipment or you can use what today's technology can provide you to make the fight easier mm. and so it's really a choice like what do you want do you want to kill yourself trying so hard to use old technology or do you want to use new technology to really serve you best so tell me how is mic media changing and affecting the market that you're in right now well, uh, Mike Media, it, it started out as kind of like as any other business. 
like a very general type of thing. Um, but then you get to realize that niching down is what's important in, um, in a business. I mean, there's, there's companies out there where it works for them. I read in a book how there, I forgot who it was, maybe C, the CEO of GE, General Electric. He came in and he's like, okay, what do we have our hands in currently? And there was like at least more than a few hundred different things that GE was doing. And he said, whoa, this is way too much. We're wasting too, wasting too much time, too much money on trying to do so much focus. And so how about we just find out where our money, where we're making the most money and basically scale those focuses up. And I forgot what they were able to niche down on, but by niching down and putting a focus on a minimal amount of effort, they were able to actually grow their business. And I know it's kind of weird when someone's like, well, we're trying to grow. So why is putting a focus on one thing going to grow our business? Well, you're going to grow your business because that's where the efficiency is at. Um, and so what I really started niching down was is uh, solopreneurs, um, <laughs> food and the food and beverage industry, which I, Mike Media, it, it's a little kind of like faction of Mike Media. I call it spaghetti marketing. Okay. Um, so I, yeah, so I do, uh, my spaghetti marketing business is towards the food and beverage industry, which is what I tend to really focus on now is the food and beverage industry. But in um, Mike Media, it tends to be solopreneurs, veterans, and uh, fitness, uh, g like gyms and personal trainers. And with, you know, better, uh, veteran entrepreneurs or solopreneurs, it's, it's becoming a po more popular thing now, right? Um, and so just trying to get your brand out there on a mass scale, that's where it's needed. I mean, it's, yes, I, I really do believe in grassroots strategy, but, um, you know, once you have buzz going on, um, and you want to take it to the next level, social media is where it's at. And especially with uh, content marketing, I mean, where else are you going to be able to write an article that doesn't necessarily have to be published or shoot a video? Uh, doesn't, that, again, it doesn't have to be published anywhere like on some type of major platform and just put it out there to, for people to find. I mean, there's uh, nowhere else to do that. So that's where Mike Media has really... Um, stepped into the light is just brand recognition and getting pe getting some more buzz to grow people's businesses, especially with in the, in the markets where uh, people are struggling. Like I'm a, I'm a boutique style uh, company. So I, I really like working with small businesses, not necessarily startups because you know, the mentality is not there yet. Right. Um, or it's, you know, the salty, crusty, veteran mentality of, I don't want to do that yet. I don't want to spend $50 on advertising. Uh, that's scary. And so I like working with established companies that have, that know how to run a business. So jumping into this style of uh, jumping into this industry, what are some of the challenges that you faced, you know, bringing Mike media from, you know, from, from an idea, to where you're at now yeah it was i mean it really one is i didn't know what i was doing <laughs> um i i lacked the confidence yeah i lacked the confidence in myself i mean when i went to nick unsworth um conference and i was like trying to decide what to do i originally wanted to start my veteran uh coaching personal development um business I was just like, dude, I have no idea how to start a business. I like, I have nothing to show forth and experience to show other vets that, you know. And so, even I, even that that I picked Facebook marketing, um, it was just really hard to convince people. Like, it was really more just confidence in myself. So, convincing myself to convince other people to use my business and. Just 
I never had any experience in sales other than like recruiting in the Marine Corps, which it was like a 30 day window. And my God bless him uh, if he sees this, but I mean, <laughs> he wasn't really, he wasn't a good uh, recruiter for me to like men- be mentored by. He just gave me the phone, and told me to call people. I'm like, what am I doing? So, um, but yeah, other than that, like I never had an experience in sales before. And yeah, I just got to say that is really just the confidence um, to be able to convince myself that to know my own value and to convince other people what value I can bring to them. Like um, it, it just, it sucks. Like I thought I had confidence. Well, I had confidence in the Marine Corps to be able to lead and, you know, talk to people, talk to senior leaders um, to tell them what I need for my troops. But when I go out there to meet people that I don't know or, and I guess to serve my own ego of growing a business, it's a lot harder. Um, and just really, it, it's a different it's, type of confidence isn't it it seems like those yeah compartmentalize like you have your professional military confidence and you've got like this like something else it, you you need a different type of energy to get this other stuff done yeah and it's just it really is this uncertainty for me and maybe a lot of veterans can connect um connect with this but getting out of the military like well let's just say in the military you're told what to do you have a blueprint like say if you want to get promoted you have a checklist. Okay, I need to do this. I need to do that. I got the requirements to be promoted. And let's just do a little bit extra more. And let me get a high uh, score on my PT test. Um, and let's get a let's get a couple medal, medals and ribbons to make me look more of like a badass. But other like you don't go out in the civilian world getting rib, uh, ribbons. You, there is no checklist for people. I mean, there are blueprints, right. but you know you have to go out there and get it. Like someone, no one just comes up to you like you're in the civilian world now. This is what you need to be successful. Um, it's just like that doesn't happen. And so we got stuck in it. It's like a scary thing for whatever reason. Like I said, we have the courage to run towards gunfire. But when it comes to that uncertainty of our livelihood in the real world, I call it the real world. It really is the real world. Um, it's scary. And because we're so embedded in the culture and the mentality in the military that going to civil like and going into the civilian world, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to translate our skills that we got into the civilian world properly. Now, there are some veterans out there right now, and I know they're watching this and they're they're a little bit I'm not going to say they're scared, but I'm de- uh, they're definitely apprehensive about social media. They're apprehensive about Facebook. They're apprehensive about taking these steps to become an established company. From your perspective in marketing and sales, what is some advice you would give to a veteran entrepreneur who wants to take some of these steps but doesn't know how? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, one, I mean, you have to just have the courage to – Put yourself out there. I mean, there is no better way to do that. Um, there is a video on YouTube. It's a guy, I forgot his name, but if you go on YouTube, it's a TEDx and it's, I think, 30 days of rejection. Okay. It, it was, it was, yeah, it's, it's, it's super funny, right? But it's genius. I mean, that's what people need to get you. That's what veterans need to get used to is rejection. I mean, yeah, there's some type of rejection in the military, but not it's different not in the civilian world and just one example of what he does he (laughs) i still need to do this but he goes to he's at burger king and he asks for a burger refill to the guy the cashier (laughs) and so he puts himself in in situations where he's going most likely get rejected and so over a period of 30 days like he didn't even finish because he's like, man, like I'm so used to being, being rejected now. Like it doesn't even matter. And so having the confidence to be rejected, it that's what helped me the most. Um, and being able to to talk to people. I mean, it's, <laughs> there's 
you know, in the military, it's very, um, I guess, lack of a better term, who has the biggest genitalia, right, right in, the, in the male world. But in the, in the civilian world, it just doesn't work that way. You've got to be able to talk to the person and meet them where they're at. Um, different, there's different personality types. I mean, I can go on for hours about the different systems of how to tell what, how a person is, but just generally being a, uh, to show that you care about someone and to gain their trust, that's how you're going to get the yes. Um, there's resource, I mean, there's endless resources on the internet to, to get started in whatever in sales and marketing. I mean, there's, you, you can just learn so much, but for me, being able to get rejected, um, uh, being no, how to talk to people. Dale Carnegie is a great book for, um, connecting with people. And I want to, I, I always like the power of three. Um, I would say, well, one, even if for, veterans that are getting started in the business really find out what it is that you want to serve. And I would say, don't chase the money, chase on what you really, really want to do in service of other people, because in the long run, the money is going to, it's not going to serve um, you the most and you're going to just get grow tired of it. I know uh, one of Ty Lopez's friends, he talks about this, how, or maybe it was someone else, how this one of his friends was able to grow like a multi-million dollar business because he chased the money. And even though he has all this growth in his company, like he hates it. He hates it, but he's so far into it that he can't just get out. You know, like why, <laughs> why leave a multi-million, um, multi-million dollar business? Um, but he hates so, but, but he hates it. He wish he can do something else. Yikes. Okay. All right. So, and okay. So I'm gonna approach a subject with you, and and uh, I might get beat up on social media. For this one, but here it goes. I've noticed a trend, at least in the veteran community, towards what I call beer, booze, and bullets, and babes. I'm gonna throw that out there: beer, bullets, booze, and boobs. Really, that's what it boils down to. <laughs> And maybe some bacon. It's a bunch of bees in there. Um, but it's this it's this trend that seems to perpetuate itself. It's, it's just rolling down, and, and, and I see a bunch of veterans get wrapped up in it. And from that, I see T-shirt companies. I see T-shirt companies. And I see another T-shirt company. And I'm sitting here. I'm shaking my head, and I'm like, I feel like we're more than that. But do you think that's hurting the veteran community? Do, do you think that could be possibly hurting the veteran entrepreneur? Because it seems like if you're not in that, you're not going to get the ear of the veteran community that you're trying to market towards. Yeah. And that's I mean, my perspective. Yeah. I, I mean, if I'm completely <laughs> off base, please correct me. <laughs> I don't think you're completely off base. Whether it, if it, the question of does it hurt the veteran community? I'm not sure. It, I mean, it really for me, it really comes down to the the individual. But I guess if someone on the outside is looking in and just sees veterans and all they do is these uh, B name companies, bacon, beers, and T-shirts, and then so that that's their perspective. They're gonna say, oh, that's what veterans can that's what they're only capable of but that's why i like seeing veterans and entrepreneurs being able to do something that's outside of that that realm and to prove that we're not just stuck to this one this one market and for other veterans that want to get into the business space like i would say i guess i guess it does hurt it in a little bit just because we're looking for someone to show us what to do, right, or how to do things. And so someone coming to the space and sees, oh, there's only T-shirt companies. I guess I got to do a T-shirt company. It, it takes the individuals uh, challenging themselves to know that 
they are limitless and to not have this living in belief that's all they can do and really i hate to be like super cheesy about it and like but i mean you can really make money in anything that you want to do i mean obviously there's certain markets that are stronger than others but i mean if you're making money and it's making you happy like why why not follow it you know yeah. um but I think it's just that the culture that we're in in the military that we're, we so like we want to hold on to it, right? Especially with the booze, the uh, the babes, and the bullets. Like, I mean, I can't tell you how many <laughs> just like you said, how many teacher companies and um, gun companies, yeah. uh, tactical companies there are. Lots of tactical companies. Yeah, but it's just like, dude, you don't. And that's what I kind of just say in my in my mentoring. Like, even if you were a grunt in the military, it doesn't mean that you have to get out and become a police officer. It doesn't mean that you have to do something tactical. Like, use what you learn, the skill the skill sets that you have, and translate it in a way that benefits benefits you the most and serves you, and um, makes you the best possible person. Because I I mean. I, I see it so many times where people get out, they think law enforcement is the way to go and they get burned out. You know, I even have one of my best friends in grade school, he wasn't prior military, but man, dude, I had a conversation with him. He's in the sheriff's right now and he's currently within his, I've, I'm not sure how long he's been in it, but he's in county, working in the county jail and like, he's miserable. I mean, I never hear this guy cuss so much on a on a conversation, but he was just like he hates the people, he hates the inmates, like people are like trying to kill him every day. Like he just hates life. I'm just like, but he says I'm doing it for the paycheck. Yeah. That's all. I'm just like, dude, and, and it's you gotta change our lifestyle. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's something that I've been kind of pushing on the podcast is that, you know, as far as veterans are concerned, veteran on <laughs> veterans who aspire to be entrepreneurs, that your nine to five does not define you. That's startup money. That's the money mm -hmm. you're going to use to push that, that business idea that you have. It's going to lay the groundwork for it that we can push ourselves a little bit forward using this nine to five. But kind of going back to what you're saying about the grunt who doesn't have to pursue those types of jobs. I often wonder if there's a sense of peer pressure, the sense of like, not, maybe not necessarily peer pressure, but maybe it's a sense of like um, expectations have been set for what you are, what, what you're supposed to do. And I wonder how many, how many grunts, if you will, want to be singers, want to be artists, want to draw comic books. And they have a talent for all of those things, but, they're not pursuing them. They're not going after it because that's not – that doesn't fit the archetype that they've they've kind of pigeonholed themselves into. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important for people, for veterans to hear a Marine talk about, yeah, I'm a Marine, but I'm also a – media guy <laughs> you know this is, <laughs> this is not the same i can go i can yes i can go kick down doors and kick ass when i need to but i'm also focused on social media i'm also focused on building businesses these two things may not have a lot uh surface in common uh, uh, you know on coming on the surface but they're both connected by you know the amount of dedication the amount of time they both require there's still some underlying currents that they run parallel with each other. But yeah, I, I, you know, I wanted to run that by somebody that I know is, is out there. They kind of got their, their finger to the pulse and uh, it's a very interesting perspective. Yeah. And you know, I just wrote an article, hopefully, um, well, now this is different. I'm writing a book, but the, the oh. one of the chapters that I <laughs> so one of the chapters that I just wrote about, and this is this comes into the whole uh, vet, veteran coming into a another world of uncertainty. But I put it in connection of kicking down doors. Um, like I said, you 
any person can make money in whatever they want to do. It's just being able to be comfortable enough to do those steps. And um, there's, I'm going to go a little bit deep here, but deep. everything that we do, <laughs> everything that we do is run by the subconscious mind. And the, this is why grunts, mm -hmm. we train and train and train and train and train and train constantly, even when it's like super boring doing the same exact thing all the time with your, with the teammates. It's because you're setting the, the muscle memory and you're building that confidence. Um, so that's why I'm saying like, we got to be able, veterans got to be able to take the skill sets of what they, their experience in the military and translate it into the civilian role. So doing constant go, being constantly in the field, constantly kicking down doors and training, that's the same attitude you got to have when building a business. Like you got to, got to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it until it becomes instinctual. Uh, Dalai Lama, uh, the 14th Dalai Lama said there's three levels of understanding and, um, without get, the first level is hearing. The second level is contemplating. And the third level is instinct, instinct. And so when you have the instinct to do what you need to do, that's, that's the level of understanding that you want to be able to have. Like, and it's going back to um, being an infantry and instructor. You can be in a classroom and an instructor telling you, this is how to kick down doors. Okay. I'm hearing it. I understand it. Right. And me understanding it is me contemplating it. Right. Okay. This is what I can visualize it. This is what I need to do. I need to, uh, communicate to my teammates, blah, blah, blah. But when you're actually doing it, that's the level, that's when you actually gain that third level of understanding and make it instinct. Like, I don't even have to think about uh, turning my corner. I don't have to think about when to put up a signal. It just happens. It's like driving a car. I don't know if you ever drove a car and just totally forgot when you were driving, um, but it's because the subconscious mind took over and you're able to do something else um, and put your brain power in whatever it is you're thinking. Wow. Bro, you got deep. You got deep on that one. Like <laughs> Man, that's some wisdom. So uh, tell me, what is on the horizon? What is coming up for Mike Media that you want these wonderful people to know about? Well, what's coming up for Mike Media is, well, not necessarily Mike Media, but um, in general, mm -hmm. I am starting a organization to help vets in transition into the civilian world, um, personal growth, personal coaching. And where I got the model from is from how I grew my business and what's important in growing a business too is finding those mentors and people that will teach you how to grow a business. And so I'm not, necessarily teaching veterans how to grow a business, but that personal growth, because everything st starts from the inside out. And so you can't have a business if you don't have relationships. And if you don't have, don't know how to talk to people, you're not going to have relationships. So that's where I am doing my focus on with the, the with the mentoring and the, and the transition assistance that I'm doing. But I mean, Mike Media in conjunction with what I'm trying to do in the transition space is being able to just combine marketing in, in that, in both those worlds transition. And if people, you know, veterans want to become entrepreneurs, my media will serve them. Um, if they want to do something else, my transition assistance will help them in the growth of whatever they want to pursue. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. This is a very noble thing. Uh, I, I think you're going to have a lot of people, knocking on your door, especially after uh, hearing some of these uh, these gems that you just laid on us, man. Uh, boom. Mind blown, bro. Mind blown. <laughs> I've, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk with me today and for laying down some of that wisdom, man, because I'm telling you, uh, this, is, this is actually one of my favorite conversations. I'm probably going to go back and listen to this again. Um, you cool. laid down some books. You mentioned some books that you you thought some people should listen should read. Uh, I remember one of them you said was, um, "How to Win Friends, Influence People." Yep. 
by Dale Carnegie. That's a good yeah, one. That's that's a classic, man. That's a classic. Uh, what was the other two? Do you remember? Yeah. And um, well, if you got another two, you want to lay it on. Yeah, I Power can't remember, three. but I mean the yeah. Start with the Why by um by Simon uh, Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek. That one's huge that's because I, I really I really resonate with that and being able to. I mean, how Apple grew their business to what it is now. They started with the why. It wasn't because they wanted to make awesome products. It's because they wanted to go above the status quo. Like, that's their message. And they built an empire from that. And so with veterans that want to get into space, like starting with the why, that's super important. Um, And maybe... I mean, if you want to learn how to talk to people and know about some cautious mind stuff, uh, pitch anything by Oren Clough. Yes. Um, it talks about how the development of our brain became to what it is now and the three major parts, the crock brain, the mid brain, the fore brain, which obviously won't get into it now, but it's super important just to know those things and how to get into the psychology of people. And I'll tell you, right. Leaders are readers. So, yep. You got to do it, man. I can't tell you, again, this is this is another thing, a, a, a trend, and this is the worst trend. This is a scary trend, is the lack of reading. I'll ask some vets, and I'm like, hey, man, what's the last book you read? Like, oh, bro. The worst answer I've received yet is, I don't read books, bro. <laughs> uh, what, what? <laughs> what do you mean you don't read books, man? That's crazy. <laughs> uh, nah, man, yeah. I'm trying to read books. I'm like, audio books, bro, audible. You know, you're in the car, slap it in there, turn on your, I mean, if you could turn on a, a, your your music on your on your pro, uh, podcast player or your your iTunes, hey man, you can knock in that Audible and knock out a book in a week, driving back and forth from work. And yeah. I know for a fact, those titles are on Audible too, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I didn't read before either. Like, I haven't read, the last book I read before I started reading a lot was uh, The Game, and I read that in Iraq. It was about the pickup artist, right? <laughs> and it had been – You can learn from that book. Yeah. It's, it's, it's still psychology. It's so funny. We were talking about that book about two weeks ago, The Game. Absolutely. The Puas, the pickup artist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, Ives, man. Yeah. Thanks again for uh, talking with me today, man. And we'll be in touch. I, I think we should do this again. This is great. Yes, absolutely. I had fun. This is a lot of fun. All right. All right. That was Ives Domingo from Mike Media, U.S. Marine Corps veteran and CEO of a social media of a media company. Guys, you're going to hear me harp on this again a, a, a lot. You're going to hear me harp on this again. Get on social media. Look, even if you don't have a business, you're sitting at home or you're in your car, you're you're driving to the, you're working out in the gym. Whatever, you're like, I'm not interested in, in, in starting my own business right now. I've got a lot of other things going on. I work for a company. You should be on LinkedIn. If you don't know what LinkedIn is, it's basically like Facebook for business. Okay, so it's very business oriented, very professional. I think they're a little for, you know, it compared to the, like Facebook, it can feel a little stuffy. It can feel a little, you know, businessy. But that's the point. All right. You need to go out there and start uh, get on LinkedIn and start networking with your veteran community with your veteran networks start building your resume on linkedin and you will see that the more connections you have the more opportunities present themselves i can't tell you how many opportunities have presented themselves to me i simply couldn't take advantage of them because i'm either out here in kuwait or i had another opportunity pop up that i was pursuing so for those of you and i know there's a lot of you on on um uh, drinking bros who have been talking about i don't have a job this and that are you on linkedin are you promoting yourself on Facebook? Have you, look, this is another thing. If you don't have a job or you're looking for something, use social media to find that thing. There's nothing wrong. If you're gonna go on Drinking Bros and put out a thing about like, hey, I need a job, I don't know what to do, help me out. Hey man, go on Instagram and put up a video. Hey, I'm a welder and I'm looking for work. This is who I am. If you need me, this is where you can hit me up. You can go on Instagram and do that search and find all the welding companies in your area, welding companies that are looking for people, welding companies that are outside of your area, welding companies in areas that you want to go work at, and shoot them an email, uh, or shoot them a direct message. 
You can go on Twitter, send out, send out a, uh, put a tweet out looking for this, looking for that. Look, just the other day I, I posted, I was looking for somebody to build an app. I said, I'm, I'm looking for an app developer uh, for the podcast. Within 10 minutes, companies were emailing me like, I want to build your app. I want to build your app. LinkedIn, use your social media, build yourself a strategy. But Rod, how do I build a strategy? Go read some books on how to, to build a social media strategy. If you want any more information on building a social media strategy, I'm in the middle of it doing it right now. Look, I, I've said it before and I will say it again. I am not an expert. I am in no way a guru. I am not a, a millionaire. I haven't built an empire behind me and I'm like, oh, listen to me, I have all the answers. But what I am is an avid reader. I am a student of the entrepreneurship game. I am a student of the marketing game right now. I'm making some good decisions and I'm making my own mistakes. And when I make my mistakes, I wanna share those mistakes with you. Mistake, one of my biggest mistakes, and you've probably seen it if you've been watching this, if you've been following me on social media, you've seen that sometimes I post the same thing on Instagram, then I put it on Facebook. That's not necessarily the wrong move, but what I have not been doing is creating social media content that is Instagram specific, where I'm, I'm, I'm creating better content that suits the different platforms. So if you're looking for something, if you're looking to expand your business, then that's another strategy you need to start considering is what kind of content am I putting across the, the spectrum of platforms that are available to me? Uh, what does that look like? You know, you can use social media, I'm sorry, you can use LinkedIn to promote your business. You can set up a business page for your business on LinkedIn and start creating more professional uh, networks with people, with distributors, with content providers, potential customers, potential partners. There's also uh, blogs, articles. There's a lot of you guys out there and gals that are extremely talented writers, that are extremely talented at what you do. You're just not doing it for some reason. Let's get those blogs going. It, it, if you wanna be a guest blogger on the After Action Review, shoot me an email. You know what, that's what we're gonna do. If you can write, if you think you can write, I want you to write a blog. Be a guest blogger on the After Action Review podcast. I will publish your blog on our website, on my uh, on Medium, which is a, a great uh, blog site to publish at. If you want to write about entrepreneurship, any aspect of veteran entrepreneurship, you want to write a blog, I will post it on the After Action Review podcast, and you will get complete full credit for it, obviously. Let's do that. And if you're looking for guest bloggers, start asking. Ask people. Hey, would you like to do this uh, thing? If you want to do a guest podcast, you want to podcast, uh, do a, a partner podcast with somebody, I'm working, uh, we're trying to work a time out with another podcast so we could do like a, a partnered podcast for an episode or two and we're going to talk about veteran entrepreneurship, vet issues in veteran entrepreneurship. There's just a couple ideas. I just right there, I spitballed a couple ideas. I really hope you run with them, take them, do what you got to do and make yourself a little bit better than you were yesterday. And that's the whole point of this podcast is, is to try and make tomorrow's podcast better than today's. So I hope, I hope that's what we're doing. All right, folks, that's it for me. And that's it for this episode of the After Action Review podcast. Uh, make sure you are subscribing. Uh, I started learning a little bit about how to do some of the stuff like, so you can subscribe right there. Boom, around here, around there. Yeah, right there. If you click on that, that's my face. Yeah, this ugly mug. If you click on my face, <laughs> it's going to pull up a subscription box. Make sure you subscribe to the After Action Review podcast. Uh, if you click over here or over, yeah, around there. Yeah, yeah, there we go, around here. Uh, you're going to see another episode of the After Action Review podcast. That's it um, for this episode. I will see you at the next episode. And make sure, guys, this is interaction, interactive uh, podcast. I want to hear from you. So if you have any suggestions for the podcast, uh, that if you want to be a guest blogger, leave your comments below, all right? Leave your comments below, or you can email me at Rod Rodriguez at the after action, at, uh, hey, Rod Rodriguez at the AAR podcast.com. I really need to get my damn email straight in my head. Uh, yeah, that's no good. So Rod Rodriguez at the AAR podcast.com. That's it. I will see you all at the next episode.